The American Rescue Plan provides $400 billion to assist with the pandemic's public health component, which will be used to increase vaccine distribution and ensure that schools will reopen safely. Welcome to Fix Your Finances, Build Financial Wealth. If you want to build your financial wealth and fill your mind with the right information, then you are at the right destination. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to provide you with more valuable content. Alright now guys, let us get straight into the topic now without any further ado. The Senate and lawmakers are currently debating the stimulus plan. They are going to make changes to the bill. Republican Congressman Paul Gosar proposes that the bill be stripped of all wasteful spending and be replaced with a $10,000 stimulus check for everyone. On Sunday, Donald Trump delivered the keynote address at the CPAC gathering. Since leaving office on January 20th, this was his first big address. Kevin McCarthy, a Republican congressman, says he'd bet his house that the Republicans would take control of the House and Senate in 2022. The Johnson & Johnson one-dose vaccines are heavily promoted by the medical community, including Dr. Anthony Fauci. They're doing this because people are afraid to take it because it is much less safe than Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. We have passed the height of flu season and the flu has nearly vanished this year. Six million tax returns from the previous year are yet to be processed by the IRS. As a result, millions of people are yet to receive their tax refunds from the previous year. A seven-year-old Alabama girl is selling lemonade to raise money for her own brain surgery. The $1.9 trillion stimulus bill was approved by the House of Representatives. The stimulus bill is now in the Senate, which will make changes to it. This coming Thursday, there will be a vote drama session. Any senator may make amendments to the bill at this stage, and then it will be voted on. The most recent vote drama session, which took place around three weeks ago, lasted 15 hours and ended at 5 a.m. That's when the speakers were irritated with their colleagues because they were caught napping, getting up for snacks and milk, and other distractions. On Thursday, we should look forward to another exciting session of that. Just to remind you, President Biden's stimulus package is worth $1.9 trillion. As a result, he was ecstatic to see it pass the building. I want to thank Nancy Pelosi for her outstanding leadership and all those who backed the initiative. We have no time to waste, said Biden. According to Biden, if we move now decisively, we can finally get ahead of the virus and get our economy going again. The Republican leaders, on the other hand, were less enthusiastic. Mitch McConnell, the Senate Republican leader, said that Democrats rammed through a bill that even liberal economists claim isn't well targeted for common sense and common ground and that the House vote represented a missed opportunity to meet American needs. The Democrats, on the other hand, claimed the opposite. Republicans, according to Democrats, squandered an opportunity to assist Americans. Senator Chris Coons, a Democrat, said that the Democrats attempted to negotiate with the Republicans for several weeks. Coons, on the other hand, said the Republicans' plans were woefully insufficient. Senator Sherrod Brown, a Democrat, said on Sunday that the stimulus bill has bipartisan support and that the public favors it. Senator Rob Portman, a Republican, responded by saying that the American public supports stimulus spending, but they're ignoring the sections of the bill that have nothing to do with COVID relief. Stimulus tests, according to Portman, would be common. That does not, however, imply that this is a correct bill. It's $1.9 trillion, with more than half of it going unused this year. Paul Gosar, a Republican congressman, proposed an amendment that would include $10,000 stimulus checks. His idea eliminates 10 items from the stimulus bill, including international assistance, arts funding, and vaccine confidence funding, and instead provides citizens with $10,000 stimulus checks. Citizens, according to Gosar, need assistance with car payments, mortgages, and rentals, as well as basic necessities. This money is needed by the people, not companies or billionaires. There was not a single Republican in the House of Representatives who voted in favor of the stimulus bill. There isn't expected to be a single Republican senator who votes yes. As a result, there will be a battle in the Senate this week. The opposing party must be granted a discussion time under the principles of reconciliation. As a result, the Senate Republicans will be demanding a number of amendments to the stimulus bill. There will be improvements to the stimulus bill if Republicans can persuade any Democrats to join their side on some topics. 
The Republicans successfully persuaded enough Democrats during the previous vote drama session to prevent undocumented immigrants from receiving stimulus checks. So we'll see what happens this week, as we'll be the first to hear if there are any updates to the stimulus bill. Donald Trump delivered his remarks at the Conservative Political Action Conference, or CPAC. President Biden's first month, according to Trump, was the worst of any president in modern history. Trump also assured the audience that his political career was just beginning. In a poll conducted in space, 55% of respondents said they would vote for Trump if he ran for president again in 2024. Senator Bill Cassidy, a Republican, does not think Trump is good for the Republican Party. Cassidy believes that Republicans will reclaim power in 2022 by focusing on issues that matter to the American people, rather than placing one person on a pedestal. Senator Rick Scott agreed with Cassidy, telling Fox News that the Republican civil war over Trump would end. Scott recently met with Trump, and they both decided that regaining control of the House and Senate in the 2022 midterm elections was the most important target. Rep. Kevin McCarthy, R. California, said he would bet his house that the Republicans would retake power in 2022. McCarthy told the audience at CPAC, I'll bet my house, don't tell my wife, but I'll bet we're just five seats away. This is the lowest Democratic vote in more than a century. McCarthy's wager did not impress Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. McCarthy's willingness to put his house on the line, according to Pelosi, should come as no surprise. McCarthy doesn't have anything to offer after risking his reputation by attempting to cancel 1,400 American survival checks during a deadly pandemic. McCarthy dubbed the stimulus bill the Pelosi payoff bill because this was Pelosi's paycheck. McCarthy said two hours before the House voted on the stimulus bill that the bill would not be voted on until 2 a.m. What is the reason for this? Since Democrats are so humiliated by the bill's non-essential waste that they're rushing it through in the middle of the night. The FDA has now approved Johnson & Johnson's one-dose vaccine for emergency use. This week, 4 million more doses will be sent out. By the end of March, they would have distributed 20 million doses. Many people, however, are hesitant to take the single-dose vaccine since it only has a 72% efficacy rate. Furthermore, their vaccine is ineffective in people over the age of 60 or those who have pre-existing conditions such as diabetes or heart disease. Dr. Anthony Fauci, on the other hand, is a supporter of Johnson and his vaccine. If you go anywhere and the Johnson vaccine is the only one available, Fauci says you should take it. People should get vaccinated as soon as possible, according to Fauci, rather than waiting for the vaccine with the highest efficacy rating. The flu season is currently at its peak in February. Typically, doctors' offices and hospitals will be overflowing with flu patients. This year, the flu has all but vanished. If you recall, the media predicted that the twindemic of COVID and the flu would strike us hard about five months ago. Fortunately, this did not happen, and we see the lowest number of flu cases in decades. Over 6 million tax returns from last year have still not been processed by the IRS. Millions of people have been waiting for their tax refunds for more than a year. There's nothing you can do to speed up the process, unfortunately. Lisa Scott, a 7-year-old girl from Alabama, had a seizure about a month ago. They discovered she had three brain malfunctions when she went to be examined and checked out. To stop the seizures, she will require multiple brain operations. Lisa began selling lemonade to cover the cost of her own brain surgeries. Her family decided to launch a fundraiser after hearing about it in the media. The goal was to raise $75,000 in order to cover costs of the surgeries at Boston's Children's Hospital. We're pleased to report that the fundraiser has surpassed its target, with a current total of about $250,000. So that's great and we're pleased. But other people are thinking that this is fucked up because she wants to be selling lemonade to pay for her own brain surgery in the first place. The American Pay-to-Live Healthcare Scheme, according to Bernie Sanders, campaign coach here, is inhumane. No child should have to sell lemonade to pay for brain surgery. That's it folks, we hope this session was informative. And make sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at FixYourFinances underscore. See you next time at Fix Your Finances. Well folks, with these two shiny pieces of information revealed, we have come to the end of the video. Take care and toodles.